Hey everyone, today's lesson is perfect squares, cubes, and roots. So if you have the lesson worksheet, take that out now. If not, grab a sheet of paper, a pencil, and a calculator, and let's get started. Okay, perfect squares, cubes, and roots. So before we start, I would like to highlight a couple of important things. Perfect squares are when you need to multiply the number times itself. And perfect cubes are when you multiply the number times itself and then times itself again, right? So you're gonna be using that number as a factor three times and I'm gonna explain why that happens. Okay, when we think about a square, right? We know that whatever the length is on one side, we've got that same length on the other side, right? Because it's a square and the lengths are all equal. The side lengths are all equal. So if I had a square that had a side length of one, this side would also be one. And one times one still gives me one. So one is a perfect square. If I have a square that's got a side length of two, right? This is two and this other side would also be two. Two by two equals four. So four is a perfect square. If I have a square with side lengths of three, it's going to be three on this side, three on this side. Three times three is nine. So those are the first three perfect squares. What you need to make sure not to do is to multiply the number to the exponent, right? We don't multiply the base and the exponent. Even though it works for two squared, it doesn't work for anything else, right? Because three times two is not six, it's nine. So let's just do one more. If this side length is four, this side length over here is also four, right? Because it's a square. Four times four is 16. So the first four perfect squares are one, four, nine, and 16. Okay, now if we go over here to our perfect cubes, if I have a cube, all of the side lengths are going to be the same length, right? Because it's a cube. So the length the width and the height of a cube are all the same number. If I have a cube that's one by one by one, one times one times one is still one. So one is a perfect cube. It's also a perfect square, but it's a perfect cube. If I have a cube with side lengths of two by two by two, two times two is four times two again is eight. So eight is a perfect cube. If I have side lengths of three by three by three, three times three is nine times three is 27. So 27 is a perfect cube. And we'll do one more. If this side length is four, that means the width is four. It means the height is four because it's a cube. Four times four is 16 times four again is 64. So the first four perfect cubes are one, eight, 27, and 64. Okay, so right now I'm gonna have you stop the video and complete the table. You're probably gonna to wanna to use a calculator for some of the larger numbers. And then when you're ready, start the video again so you can check your answers. Okay, so here are the answers to the perfect squares, cubes, and roots. So take a minute right now to check all of your answers and make corrections if you need them because this is something that you're going to want to use um, as we move not only throughout this lesson but also as we move through the next couple of lessons in our topic. When you're finished, just start the video again and we're going to move on to our next set of problems. All right, so here we are. We're going to do a couple more examples, right? Now, with these examples, we're actually going to be working backwards because what they are asking us to do here is to find each root, right? So we've got square roots and then we've got cube roots. Now, this symbol right here is called a radical sign, right? This symbol that I'm highlighting, that's called a radical sign. And same thing here, we have a radical sign down here. Now the only difference that you're going to notice, 
between problems where you're finding the square root and problems where you're finding the cube root is the cube root is going to have this little three right here, right? So any time that we see a little three in front of the radical sign like that, we know that we're going to be finding a cube root. Okay, and what we're doing when we're finding square roots and cube roots is we're basically going backwards, right? So this question says, ask yourself, what number times itself gives you the number inside the radical, right? So we're looking at the number inside and we're saying to ourselves, what number, right? What number can I multiply to itself, right? To give me 225, right? That's what I want to know. What number can I put in that place? And if we just go backwards and we look at our table, right, we already know that 225 is a perfect square. So we can go backwards on our table. As a matter of fact, I'll do that right now. Go backwards on our table and we can find 225, which is right here. And if I look at the 225 and I head over to the left, right, here's 225 and I head over to the left, that tells me that the square root of 225 is in fact 15. So if we move ahead again to our paper, we can fill in this answer right now. Right? So the square root of 225 is going to be 15. Now, this one down here, I'm doing the cube root of 343. So I want to know what number right, times itself times itself again is going to give me 343. Okay, so again, we can go backwards, right? We can go backwards on our page, and this time we can look at our cube roots. So if I look at my cube roots, I go down the column here until I find 343, up oh, here it is, and I can see that the cube root is seven, because seven times seven times seven is 343. So if we go back over here, we can now fill in our answer for the cube root, right? And the cube root is just 7. Okay? So just to recap, the reason that this answer is 15 is because 15 times 15, the number times itself is 225. The reason that this answer is 7 is because the number times itself, times itself again is 343, right? Cube roots. Okay, so now it's your turn. So stop the video and take a few minutes and see if you can find the square roots and the cube roots of these numbers, and then we will start the video again. Okay, so hopefully you are ready to go and you have checked all of your answers. So let's start going through these and let's come up with, uh, with the correct answers and you can check your work and see how you did. All right, first of all, this is a square root of 36, right? What number times itself is 36? And that's going to be 6. This is a cube root of 64. You have to be careful with 64 because 64 has a cube root and a square root. So the cube root of 64 is 4 because 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. This time we need the cube root of 4,913. Right? That was in our table and the answer would be 17 because 17 times 17 times 17 is 4,913. The cube root of 121 is 11. Now this one, look at this one. This one's a little strange. I think I'm going to save that for the end. Let's go back up here. This time we have the square root of 64. That's just 8. We've got the cube root, right? Always look for that little 3. The cube root of 1,000 is 10 because 10 times 10 is 100 times 10 again is 1,000. Then we've got this square root of 256. That's going to be 16, right? 16 times 16 is 256. The cube root of 125 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25, and 25 times 5 again is 125. You okay, know, these two look a little scary, but they're really not. They just have some zeros on the end. So let's ignore those zeros for now, and let's just look here. So 81 is a perfect square, right? We know the square root of 81 is 9. 
And all I need to do is put a zero on the end of it now, right? And 90 times 90 would be 8,100. Same thing with this one. If we just look at the numbers, right? Forget the zeros for a minute. 13 times 13 is 169, but I need 16,900. So let's put a zero on the end there. And then when I multiply 130 times 130, I will get 16,900. Okay, hope you guys did well with your perfect squares, cubes, and roots. As always, if you have any questions, ask me or ask your teacher. See you next time.